Is the M1 MacBook Air still worth it in 2024? It's been three years and Apple still sells it for 999 pounds, dollars, euros, or 99,900 rupees. In fact, it's quite frequently discounted with Amazon having it on discount right now for under 800, making it look like a steal versus the M2, which is at least 350 bucks more. Instead of detailing each and every technical spec, like the 10 core processor in the M2 versus the seven in the M1, I'm going to talk to you about what truly matters for most people buying these MacBooks. And I'll also show you a trick to buy the M1 for under 600 if you can make a couple of small compromises. Quite impressive, you say. Tell me more. <laughs> Such a bad joke. On that note, let's begin. First, here's the TLDR. There are only four differences that matter between the M1 and the M2 Air, which is first, the M2's processor is slightly faster than the M1 on paper, but makes no perceptible difference to most users, unless you're like a super pro, high-end video editor, or hardcore gamer playing heavy duty games. Second, the designs are quite different with the wedge shape of the M1 versus the rectangular shape of the M2, which is more of a personal design or aesthetic choice than anything else. Anything, the M1 feels slimmer and more iconic Apple versus the M2, which has the same design language as other laptops nowadays. Third, the webcam quality which is a bit subpar on the M1 with 720p versus the M2 on 1080p and definitely a bit of a compromise but one that you can live with and even fix by using a trick I'll tell you about later in the video. And finally, the screen which is comparable but brighter and slightly bigger on the M2 versus the M1. In addition to this, there's a few issues and problems that have been discussed a lot by reviewers and users across the world like the SSD hard drive speed which is slower than the M2's base model but works just fine on the M1's which is a plus for the M1 once again over the M2 and also the ports which are kind of bad on both the M1 and the M2 and a few other things which I'll go over in detail. And finally, before we deep dive into all of these, take a minute to absorb the price difference between the M1 and the M2. It's 150 pounds, dollars, euros or 15,000 rupees on the website, which is already enough to get you a brand new pair of second gen AirPods with your M1 Air. By the way, if you use the price hack I talk about later in this video, then you can get the M1 for cheaper and hence be able to buy AirPods Pro or even an Apple Watch SE with that price difference. That's pretty big and hence in this video, we're not looking for small incremental differences as being enough to justify moving up a notch to the M2. We're looking at whether it's okay to give up another brand new Apple product that would be highly useful to you if you don't already have one. Okay. So now that you've cut through the clutter and you know all of the important factors that matter, let's dive into them to help you decide. Okay, first, let's get the elephant in the room out of the way, the processor and the performance of the M1. The M1 MacBook Air has, well, the M1 chip with eight CPU cores, seven GPU cores, eight GBs of RAM, and 256 GBs of storage in the base model. And by contrast, the M2, which again has the M2 chip, has the same eight CPU cores, one more GPU core making it eight, and the same eight GBs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage. But what does all this mean? Apple claims that the CPU, which does your processing for tasks in the M2, is 18% faster than the M1, and the GPU, which is the graphics processing unit, is 35% faster than the M1. But in real world testing, and for most users, this difference is imperceptible. Unless you're playing really high-end graphic games or doing super high-end video editing. For the most everyday tasks that most of us do, including emails and apps and games and video conferencing and using the web browser, even all at the same time, even then the M1 chip is blazing fast and then some. The real upgrade you might need is very much available on both the M1 and the M2, which is the RAM. Eight gigs of RAM may not be enough if you plan on coding and compiling or doing some video editing. And the other advantage on the M1 is that even the base 256 GB storage model is just as fast on data transfer by using two NAND chips versus the M2, which has created a world of controversy by having the base model use only one NAND chip and hence slowing down the data transfer speeds. So once again, it's a win for the M1. Second, the design. The M1 has a familiar wedge shape design, which, which definitely feels thinner in the front, where the wedge shape comes into play, whereas the M2 is slightly thinner than the M1 at the other side of the laptop where the hinge sits. You can choose which design you like better, but this definitely isn't the major difference between the two that people should pay for. If anything, given the place where we hold the MacBook the most is from the front, the M1 wedge shape 
will make it feel thinner for sure. It has something minimalist and Scandinavian about the design versus the boxy design aesthetic of the M2 and frankly most new laptops. So for me, this actually makes the case to get the M1. Just like I'm hoping my hard work on this video makes the case for your support and liking this video and subscribing to my channel. I'm working so hard to give you guys better and better videos and get to 5,000 subscribers by the spring. So I really appreciate all of your love and support. Third, let's talk about something many reviewers don't focus on much but really matters to the everyday user nowadays. The webcam, the camera you'll use for FaceTime and Zoom and Teams and Google Meet which now makes up at least a third of most people's days. The M1 MacBook Air has a 720p webcam versus the M2 Air's 1080p. This might seem like just a small upgrade but to be honest the webcam in the M1 Air isn't that great. It's just about acceptable. Have a look at what Marques Brownlee has to say. It's still a pretty garbage quality 720p, not even 1080 webcam. This is what that looks like. Ouch! Look, let me be honest. I think it works fine. It won't dazzle you. It's not the best in low light, but it works. It's definitely subpar for a thousand pound laptop. And I also checked on what the other folks on the internet found to compare with my experience. And as you can see, the difference is there, but you can live with it. In fact, some of the more positive reviewers say that it produces a clean image despite only being 720p. So it's a compromise, but not a complete deal breaker unless a core part of what you do involves being on video calls and you really care about how you look and the aesthetic in it. In that case, this might be the one reason to actually upgrade to the M2. However, if this does bother you and you still want to buy the M1, I have a solution. Apple now lets you use your iPhone as a webcam and any recent iPhone will have a better camera than this. Fourth, the screen. Between the MacBook Air M1 and the M2, the display is slightly smaller at 13.3 inches for the M1 versus the 13.6 inches for the M2. And given the laptops are the same size, the M2 squeezes in a larger display because of its edge-to-edge -edge display design. This is actually quite nice. I have the M2, which I use for most of my writing and editing, and it's nice to have an edge-to-edge -edge display, but there's nothing wrong with the M1. Unless you put it right next to the M2, it's a classic case of not missing what you haven't seen yet. They both have the same resolution at 2516 to 1664. They have the same pixels per inch at 224. There's absolutely no difference in quality. The M2 does have a higher brightness though with 500 nits versus the 400 for the M1, which does tend to make a bit of a difference if you're working outdoors, but no noticeable difference in a home or an office environment. So the big question is this, do you work outdoors a lot or really want that modern edge to edge design? Unless the answer is yes, which I imagine it won't be for most of you, then there isn't a massive noticeable difference worth paying for. Now, one of the limitations of Apple's MacBook Airs, both the M1 and the M2, are the ports, which is slightly worse on the M1 versus the M2. Let me explain. The M1 basically has three ports, two USB-Cs and one headphone jack. Given that one of the USB-Cs is typically taken up by the charger, you basically have one left. Now, this is an issue if you want to connect more than one thing to your laptop, for example, a mouse and a flash drive along with an external monitor at the same time. This needs you to then use a USB hub like the excellent Satechi one right here. A hub like this would cost anything between 50 to 100 pounds or dollars or three to 5,000 rupees for a good quality one, which will add to the overall price you pay. The M2 MacBook has the same ports. The only difference is that it has a MagSafe charger so you get both USB ports to use. But honestly, I have an M2 Air and I still use the USB hub because some of the things I connect use an old USB-A port or an HDMI cable like my monitors and I also need to pop in a memory card from a camera from time to time. So frankly, unless you have exactly two USB-C compliant devices that you want to connect and nothing else, I would say that the M1 isn't very different from the M2. They both just suffer from the problem of having very few ports. Porty bad? Another bad one. Porty bad. Also, the SSD issues about the slow writing speeds to your hard drives that you might have read about on the internet are limited to the M2's base model. Once again, a plus for the M1. Now finally, the hack to saving money and buying the M1 MacBook for under 600 bucks. And this one is simple. There are so many websites, including Apple themselves, that sell refurbished MacBook Airs. Now stay with me. 
Apple's refurbish program is actually very, very good. They give you a practically brand new product with the same one year Apple warranty that you get on new products. And they're listing the MacBook Air M1 at £850 right now. And if you want a further discount, you can use the very popular website called Back Market in the UK, which has it for less than £600. In India, websites are offering it for under 60,000 rupees. And on websites like refurb.me in the US, you can get it for about $650. Now you know all of the important factors to make this decision. Everything else is pretty much the same and as good and as good as ever on the MacBook Air M1 and the M2. You get the same all day battery life that people buy MacBooks for, the same Apple warranty, the same storage options, an excellent keyboard and industry defining trackpad. All in all, I think that Apple and Tim Cook have created a blessing and a curse in the M1 MacBook Air. It was too good to improve on, so the M2 is more about smoothing things out and using things like the M2 chip for marketing even though they don't matter to most people. If you have the money for it or you're a super pro user and really care about the webcam quality, then of course, go for the M2. It's a great laptop. But if you want good value and you want to use the extra cash to pick up a pair of AirPods to use with your brand new MacBook Air M1, I'd go for it because it's still a killer deal in 2024. So. What did you decide? Tell me in the comments and ask me any questions. And if you want to go through my detailed MacBook Air review, click right here.